What's up, guys? James Carter TV. Here I am continuing my 2016 NFL Draft recap videos that I'm doing for each and every team in the NFL. And today we move on. We stay in the NFC East and we go to the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, earlier today, I ripped the Dallas Cowboys for the 2016 NFL Draft for the most part. Am I going to do the same with the Philadelphia Eagles? Am I in a bad mood today? Not really. I actually like the Philadelphia Eagles draft. Like, maybe a little bit of a strong word, but I think it's a fine draft for the Philadelphia Eagles. And let's get into it. Let's start with her second pick. Uh, actually, no, excuse me, their first pick, the second pick in the 2016 NFL draft, and that is Carson Wentz out of North Dakota State. I cannot believe how many people did not like this pick, how many people did not like the Philadelphia Eagles trading up. Like, I know Eat That Pussy 445, if you know who that is on YouTube, I know he's mad at everything, but even beyond him, people did not like this move. And I don't understand it. Look where the Philadelphia Eagles are um, as a franchise right now. Their team is pretty good. Their defense, I think, could has the potential to be really good. There are some questions in the secondary, but their front seven looks really good. Their offensive line needs some pieces, yes. But overall, I think this is a pretty good football team, and at least an average football team. A football team that won 10 games consecutively in 2013 and 2014, had a down year 7-9 in 2015, but again, that's pretty much an average, even a little bit above average NFL team. And the thing that's holding them back from being a perennial playoff winner, perennial NFC East champion, is the quarterback position. They've had Nick Foles in there, and when he was in there and when he was doing good, they made the playoffs. They had Mark Sanchez, didn't do good, they didn't make the playoffs. Sam Bradford, didn't do good, they didn't make the playoffs. Sounds like to me, when the Eagles have a quarterback, they make the playoffs. Kind of like when they had Donovan McNabb and they made the playoffs all the time. Hell, they made the NFC Championship almost all the time. Too bad they couldn't win it most of the time, but they did. So, Eagles need a quarterback, and they get a quarterback. And people are saying, why? Why'd they give up all these draft picks? For what? You were stuck in no man's land. You were in the desert. You were screwed. You were finished. You had San Bradford and Chase Daniel. You weren't going to make the playoffs in 2016 with those two. Now with Carson Wentz, there's a chance. I'm still probably going to say you're not going to make the playoffs, but I really like Carson Wentz. 6'5", 225 pounds, was a winner at North Dakota State. Nice arm, nice accuracy, nice size as I just mentioned. Nice intangibles, nice leader ability, nice intelligence. Hell, this is a really good quarterback prospect we have here. I don't know what's really wrong with him. I guess some things that are wrong with him is that he doesn't have elite traits. Maybe not an elite mobile guy or an elite arm talent or elite intelligence, but he's pretty good in all areas. And then maybe he needs to adjust to the pro style game, maybe. But I think he's pretty good right now. And I think the Eagles got a really good player. I give it an A minus. Only reason it's not an A is because you may have given up a little more than I would have liked in the trade, but I think it's fine. Because the 2017 first rounder, that's going to hurt. All right, next we move on to offensive guard Isaac Siumalo out of Oregon State. Don't love Isaac Siumalo. He's a guy at Boise State, or excuse me, Oregon State, that started just because they really didn't have the talent otherwise. I'm not sure he would have been a starter at Alabama or anything like that. He has some injuries. Has some issues just in terms of staying on the field and just playing well. I give it only a, I give it a C plus. I understand though the need was at guard. There was a need at guard. Hugh Thornton's gone. Evan Mathis was gone. And you know, Chip Kelly ran them both out of the door. So now you have huge needs at guard. You need a guard. You got one here. Unfortunately for you, and also this is why your grade was saved here. There was a run at guard. Hell, the 49ers took one in the first round, and Joshua Garnett, I can't even believe it. I thought he'd be available at this point. So there was a little bit of a run at guard. So you had to take one. You took one at Isaac C. Umalo. I'm just not a big Isaac C. Umalo fan. I gave it a C+. Plus. Then we move on to the fifth round, because this is your next pick. And it's Wendell Smallwood out of West Virginia. A guy that's 5'10", but boy, is he scrappy. And he can put his shoulder down. He can head into a uh, linebacker's freaking chest. This guy's also a nice receiving ability coming out of this West Virginia offense where they like to 
do a lot of check downs to running back. So nice versatile guy. And I think he emulates Darren Sproles a bit, who he's now behind and can learn a bit about or learn a lot from. And then maybe, maybe down the road could even really get some playing time for this Philadelphia Eagles team. I really like this pick and I give it an A minus. Next, we move on to the next fifth round pick. A guy that I'm going to have a little trouble pronouncing, but I think I've got this down. Hala Puli Vaiti Vaitai out of TCU. A guy, I think I did a pretty good job there. A guy that started left and right tackle for TCU, kind of bounced back and forth, couldn't really find a mainstay spot. But was a pretty good starter. Protected Trayvon Boykin pretty well. But the problem with him is, number one, he's, he's sitting at about 320 right now, which is a little high. That puts him closer to a guard than a tackle. Furthermore, a guy that has very limited upside because he's not a great athlete at all. And you wonder how much can technique really save him because technique can bring you a, a lot. I mean, he can technique can bring you to the point of being a starter, but I never really could be a great player. But if you can get a start out of fifth round pick, I think that'd be nice. Although I'm pretty sure he may only be a reserve for you that only plays uh, in when injury ensues. But I like the pick. I give it a B plus. Next, we move on to cornerback Blake Countess out of Auburn. This guy's 5'9". I mean, we talked about Wendell Smallwood being short. Now we have a really short guy in Blake Countess, 5'9". But he's a nice athlete for the most part. I mean, he had a 4'4", 840, which is a little bit, maybe a little above average, maybe average for the cornerback position. But a nice vertical jump, nice broad jump. It has some size and some toughness to him, and he needs it. And sitting at 5'9", you need to be tough. You need to be feisty if you're going to have any chance. He is going to be a slot corner at the NFL level. So... You already know what he's going to be. Can he succeed in that spot? We'll see. I think he has some nice tools. He was able to do something in the opera, but not too much because there was some talent above him. I like the pick for the most part. I only give it a B, though, because, again, I, I, I question how much the height is really going to hurt him in the next level because, man, it's going to hurt. You can never put him on the outside, not even for a play. Next, you have Jalen Mills out of LSU. And it, well, actually, let me back up. I understand 5'9", you can. Like, okay, uh, Tyron Matthew can play cornerback, but that's an exceptional talent. Blake Countess, I'm not sure it's quite that. All right, now we move back to the seventh round. Jalen Mills out of LSU, a guy that I didn't think was going to be here. I did think he was going to fall. A lot of people didn't think he was going to fall this far, but neither did I. I thought he was going to fall maybe to the fifth round, but they get him here. Jalen Mills has some issues. That's definitely evident if you put on the film. But it's nice to know this is a guy that started four straight years at LSU. One, two, three, four started. Now, maybe not every game. Some games he was injured or whatnot, but he started. So we're getting a guy that has plenty of in-game experience. And against SEC talent like Amari Cooper and all that crap. So that's nice. Okay, great. Now, he's probably only going to be a slot corner, maybe a safety. He plays safety at LSU, but I'm not sure that's going to be a great spot for him because he doesn't have really good instincts, especially at the NFL level. Man, these coaches are going to really throw him for a loop. Really special teams where I think he's going to make the most impact, and I think there could be quite an impact there, and there is great value here. So I do give them an A- minus for this pick. Next, we move on to Alex McAllister out of Florida. This guy caught my eye at the combine, but not in a good way. He's a defensive end, so he was with the defensive line group. And, man, he looked like a tight end or a wide receiver. I mean, he looked like he was lost. I said, hey, are we sure this guy's supposed to be here? I and mean, this guy doesn't look like a defensive end. And I, I highly question, he's not very strong either. I think he got 19 reps on the bench press. So I really question how the hell he's going to be able to get past Trent Williams or Tyron Smith or Lyle Collins or anybody. I don't think he's strong enough. I don't think he has the build. I think he's going to flame out. I don't think he has a chance in the world, to be quite honest with you. But I give them a C only because... He, I think a presidential change could be in his future. And if that can happen, then I think this could be a guy that can actually do something in the NFL level. But I'll be waiting for that. All right, and then finally, we had Joe Walker out of Oregon. A guy that when you turn on the film, wasn't good. I mean, his coverage, I mean, actually, his coverage abilities are okay. But besides that, poor against the run, poor linebacker instincts. But then at his pro day, turned some heads. Had some nice numbers. We're in a 4-5-something 40. Had a nice broad jump and whatever. So, 
you go back on tape and you say, okay, where is the speed? And you say, I don't know where it is. But the thing is, you're sitting here in the seventh round. You want to take guys with this kind of athletic potential. And that's what Joe Walker is. So being a seventh round pick and being a guy that posted some nice numbers and at least he's played football in his life, I give it a B minus. So I just question, man, why is this not on film? Why are you only a great athlete at your pro day? So overall, though, the th big thing about my grading system, let me tell you about my grading system real quick. I've concocted a grading system uh, myself. I've created it, and it, it, it's a weighted GPA system where the first few rounds have carry much more weight than the later rounds. Now, this is a very unique circumstance because the Eagles had a first-round pick, a third-round pick, and then a fifth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, a seventh, and seventh. So really, because of my scale, those first two picks... Uh, really determine the grade here. So it's a little higher than it may appear it should be. Because I know what are you going to say, how are you going to give them this grade when their later picks were not very good? Well, my this is a weighted skill because honestly, I accept the fact, and you should too, that the fact is a fact. The fact of the matter is, a lot of these guys are not going to make the damn team. Three years from now, a lot of these guys are not going to make the damn team. So even though I don't like a lot of these picks and blah, 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 whatever, it really may not even matter anyway. So with that in mind, they carry little weight as compared to the first two. So really, the grade was pretty much determined by the first two. And it came out being a B, a B 3.16 GPA for this Philadelphia Eagles draft. I think it's a fine draft. Again, it's mainly determined by those first two. And then you hope that one of these guys can come on for you. I think Hala, Puli, Vaiti, Vaitai can be one of those guys. Wendell Smallwood, Jalen Mills. You hope that one of these guys... Just one of these guys can really contribute for you. And I think you may have found one there. So overall, I like the Eagles draft 3.16 GPA, which equals a B. Until next time, James Carter TV, I'm out. Peace.